Okay, I put up a video yesterday and um, just went back and checked it this morning for traffic. And um, which, no, I'm not someone who's, who puts a whole lot into um, an online presence, so I don't normally get a lot of traffic. But I went back and used two popular platforms and looked and did a search through their database for my video using the specific keywords that I have tagged onto the videos and neither one of those platforms would act would let the video show up in the search results so um no direct confirmation yet if this if the video i uploaded yesterday was or was not but this video i'm just kind of putting out there and um not going to tag it with anything and just kind of see what it does but i do suggest if anybody is watching this you may get a little more um, detailed understanding of what I'm, where I'm going with this with the whole mosquito thing. So it should be easy enough to just click on my profile and see the last video that I put up. So what I'm talking about is the um, what they're called. This is saying the reengineer mosquitoes released in Florida pilot program, and the end of April, after a long fight, um, Florida residents were starting to put out these basically mosquito boxes that you just add water to and it releases male mosquitoes with a type of limiting gene um and here's a little where i'm doing some if it keeps raining on me today i'm going to do some more research today but um this is like the second generation of these from the company ox attack and during the brazil studies it was shown that the mosquitoes were adapting and, you know, basically making a new species in Brazil that were carrying the, the genetic coding from the GM mosquitoes. So therefore, now in the natural population, there is a new hybridized type of mosquito. And um, Oxitec claims right here, go scroll up a little bit. Um, non-persistent. It says right here, the self-limiting system means that our self-limiting gene cannot establish in the ecosystem. This is not exactly true. And um, you'll see a little bit more about that from the video I put up yesterday. Um, this is what I was reading last night <clears throat> and what kind of something I have to look into today a little bit more. But um, basically, they have a self-limiting gene, but to be able to grow them in the lab, they can't. this self-limiting gene cannot be a factor, or then they would not be able to produce the number of mosquitoes they want to. So they have designed, highlight this right here for you. It says, we've also designed our insects so that we can turn off the self-limiting gene with an antidote called tetracycline, which is um, an antibiotic the um, brand name is Somiacin, and this allows us to breed our insects at a large scale without the need for any additional genetic engineering. Our second generation friendly 80s Egypti mosquitoes, for example, were engineered in 2013, and we have been breeding that the, the strain from those original mosquitoes ever since. So my question is in second generation, because the the trials in Brazil ran from 2013 to 2015. That doesn't mean they were using this generation. I understand that, but um, still I have questions. But my question right now is about the antidote tetracycline. And I was thinking to myself, what happens? Seeing it's a very common um, antibiotic, and a lot of antibiotics are um, similar in effect. And so I was wondering... Well, what if the female mosquito bites someone who is taking the pharmaceutical drug? Would that not bring that tetracycline into the system and thus kind of shut down the, um, the program about how, so when they do breed and they do lay eggs, those eggs will not go to maturity. The second generation is claiming that only the females won't make it to maturity, but the males 
in fact will to then be able to go into the back into the environment and then again continue the process of shutting these genes off in the female mosquitoes drop the female population you pretty much you you wipe it out the female mosquito can live different there's so many different you know a couple hundred um varieties of mosquitoes we have in america i believe um females generally last you know say between 40 and 60 days but the males usually last only about 7 to 14 days and um so anyway the whole claim is that they will they'll shut off the they'll shut down the population and by their results yes they are effective and um reducing populations from on an average of 85 percent all the way up to 96 percent the only problem is what they're not including is that um, a counter study done in Brazil showed that the populations jumped right back up again and they did find the gene from the GM mosquitoes had transfer had transferred into the native population again you can see links and stuff to that from the ones I put up yesterday um, this is science news article um, here's I'm gonna try to get it all the way it says those mixed in genes from the test are unlikely to strengthen Florida mosquitoes powers to spread disease unlikely doesn't mean a whole lot of anything when it, especially when it's coming from the EPA but what that same thing it is a possibility to say that it's unlikely still in in turn admits that there is a possibility and um they're looking at i may miss this i'll probably just chop this out okay here it is it says the distance matters they're putting these neighboring households we'll start right here neighboring households will host mosquito traps to monitor how far from the nursery boxes the oxitec gm males tend to fly that's data the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency wants to see. Based on distance tests elsewhere, 50 meters may be the median, um, Rose estimates. The distance matters because pest controllers want to keep the free-flying GM mosquitoes away from outdoor sources of the antibiotic tetracycline. That's the substance of genetic engineers used as an off-switch for the self-destruct mechanism in female larva. Rearing facilities supply the antibiotic, antibiotic to the larva, turning off the lethal genetics and letting females survive in a lab to lay eggs for the next generation. If GM mosquitoes, if GM males loosed in Florida happen to breed with a female that lays eggs in some puddle of water laced with the right concentration of tetracycline, daughters that inherited the switch could survive to adulthood as biters and breeders. The main possible sources in the Keys would be sewage treatment plants. Um, and that is because it's like when you consume, you, you know, are on pharmaceuticals, Every time you use the bathroom, those just kind of all the chemicals go into the sewage treatment plants and those in turn come back into, um, you know, your water supply. They're not all filtered out. It's always a good idea to have a very good water filtration system in your house. And um, but my question is, and what I'm going to be, there was a Yale University did a study and I'm going to go back and ask some of the scientists in that study, send out some emails this morning before I head out, and um, just ask them, hey, was this was it first generation or second generation that you were studying in Brazil, and what about the idea of a female mosquito biting someone who is on um, somiacin, the tetracycline antibiotic, what happens then, you know, and the blood, how mosquitoes use blood, basically, once the female mosquito consumes its first dose of blood, it basically turns on the ovaries, in a sense. It gives, it sets up the genetic coding inside of them, and it has to do with RNA transferring into proteins that, you know, that give the onset of them 
becoming fertile and um, and start to lay eggs. Um, and they continue to bite it to keep that going. They continue to draw on the blood to keep that cycle going in themselves. But I'm curious as like if the mosquito then draws in um, some tetracycline in that blood, would that make these their eggs turn that off? And if that's the case, this is a horribly dangerous um, idea to do. And, um, and again, you'll look at yesterday how talking about hybrid vigor, you introduce a new species into an ecosystem. It, you know, it's, I think yesterday I said nature always wants to be bigger and better. It's not necessarily being bigger, but it is being better. And um, so this has all of the likelihood to completely blow up in their faces. And, um, and here's my, my rub is you can damn well bet that this, um, company Oxitec is not just laying awake at night because they're so worried about, you know, 400,000 people a year dying from malaria. But you can bet the CEOs are sitting back in their little think tanks. How can we really make this into a profitable, a profitable business? And with the release of these boxes, they, um, it's like a plug and play is how this, one of the comments made in here in this article, you basically order from their facility. They'll ship the boxes out to you. You put them in your yard. You just add water and you sit back and enjoy the fun. Just gather all your friends around and watch these wonderful mosquitoes just hatch and fly around. It sounds like something you'd order out of a comic book back in the, um, late seventies. But anyway, it's marketing is what this is. What they've designed this to do is basically anybody can do this. You don't need a team of scientific experts in your community. If you feel your community says we want this, your townships, your, your cities, your towns, whatever, they can say, Hey, we don't need any expertise at all. We just buy these box and you just add water. And so it's a, like I commented yesterday, it's a marketing scheme. It's a marketing ploy. So anyway, I'll touch back base on this for whatever reason. The skeeters have gotten hold of me and I just, I want to look through this more and more and see if I can put out a video that does not get censored. If indeed yesterday's video did. So again, hope you're having a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon.